We're going to use the four-step solving process. Let's start with state. What is the probability that Mrs. Roberg's baby is born first? Now we need a plan. We're going to start by summarizing the random variables for Mrs. Roberg's due date, which we'll call R, and Miss Pinito's due date, which we'll call P. Next, we're going to define a new random variable as the difference in the due dates. We'll call this new random variable D, and it's going to equal P minus R, the difference in our other two random variables. Now, in order to do this, we need to assume that R and P are independent random variables. And given the context of this problem, that seems like a fair assumption. All right, so we'll get started with the do step. Let's start by describing our random variable R. Since the distribution of the due dates is normally distributed, let's stamp a normal distribution. Now the mean is 190 and the standard deviation is 12, so the middle of our distribution is at 190. That's the most likely time for the baby to be born, on its due date. But if we go a couple standard deviations in each direction, it wouldn't be unheard of for the baby to be born between any of these dates. The Panito due date is also normally distributed, but its mean is 200 and its standard deviation is 8. So we'll label the axis of this distribution two standard deviations from the mean as well. When we look at these side by side, we see a lot of possibilities for either baby to be born first. The Roberg baby is more likely to be born first because its mean is earlier in the year. But if the Roberg baby is a little late, say at 202 days, one standard deviation above the mean, and the Panito baby is on time at 200 days, the Panito baby would be born first. So the difference in due dates is P minus R, and the mean difference is going to be the mean of the Panito due date minus the mean of the Roberg due date. 200 minus 190, so that's 10. When you combine random variables, start by calculating the variance, not the standard deviation. So the variance of the difference is actually going to be the sum of the Panito variance plus the Roberg variance. And variance is just standard deviation squared, so we have 8 squared plus 12 squared. That ends up being 208. Now notice even though our random variable is the difference between random variables, the variance is actually the sum of the variances of the other random variables. Anytime you're combining random variables, you're going to have more variability. So that's why we're adding here. We're increasing the amount of variability, not subtracting. So if the variance is 208, we can just take the square root and find out the standard deviation of our difference in due dates is approximately 14.4. Now the difference between the due dates is also normally distributed. And we just calculated that the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is about 14.4. So let's label a couple standard deviations from the mean on the axis. Now on this axis, zero would be about right here. If the difference is anywhere to the right of this line, it means the Roberg baby was born first because the Panito birth date was a larger number, meaning it was born later in the year and to the left of zero would mean the Panito baby was born first. The area under this entire density curve is one, and the probability we're trying to find is equivalent to this area we're gonna shade blue. So we can find this area on the calculator. If you press second and then vars, you get to the distribution menu. Go to norm CDF. Now our lower limit is going to be zero. That corresponds to our cutoff right here. And we actually don't have an upper limit. As long as the Roberg baby's born first, it doesn't really matter how late the Panito baby is. So we'll put 99999. For mean, we're going to put 10. And for standard deviation, we're going to put the square root of 208. Now we already calculated the standard deviation's about 14.4. But by putting the variance square rooted, we're going to use the exact value, and we don't have to worry about our rounding of the 14.4. And when we press enter, we see the probability that the Roberg baby is born first is about 0.756. Now we're ready to conclude. The probability that Mrs. Roberg's baby is born first is about 0.756. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got a hundred problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.